Okay, Ruler, settle down. Ruler School is brought to you by Odyssey Games, where you can go to get singles for all your Force of Will and other trading card games, as well as these amazing patrons. Thank you for your support. Class is in session. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Tournament Report with yours truly, Paul Reisman. And uh, shout out to the Verve Pipe tonight as we look through the recent online gaming geek uh, deck lists from our GP that we had this past week. I've been putting these uh, deck lists together, so if you are seeing these and you're seeing where we are today on the internet, you know that it's on our Facebook page uh, at Ruler School. So just go to facebook.com slash Ruler School and all of these deck lists are right there for you if you haven't seen them already. And uh, <laughs> we're doing this a little in a little bit of a different format so I can you know, drink water. I tend to talk pretty quickly in these videos and uh, just hoping to have a more uh, conversational style of tournament report with you all here, uh, here going forward. So let's get started. We could go right into Derek's top deck list uh, that he won the tournament with, but I just want to give you a few highlights of the, um, of the different uh, rulers that we had in the actual tournament. We had about 70, 72 players, something like that. A bunch of drops at some point, but definitely when everything uh, shot off uh, round one, we had about 70 players, which is, in my understanding, one of the largest GPs we have ever had. And uh, that's honestly, I, I think a lot of people just kind of fall into my category. They can't travel super easily, but they can jump on Discord and they do have a webcam. So uh, this is one of the largest GPs that I've ever heard of in the United States. So this is pretty big. And I think it was only mainland United States. That, uh, and it wasn't, uh, I think it was the like United States and Canada, but other, other countries just weren't able to be uh, in, involved in this particular one. So the highest turnout that we had um, in the tournament was the Milus Mujadar burn list with about 10 decks. And then the second largest was Guru Balesta Almerius. So as you came into this tournament, it was pretty clear that everyone identified the threat as being burn and you should have. <laughs> uh, Milus Mujdar is an incredibly powerful deck. We've added on the channel, so you know how it works. We've done two different variations, the Matchstick Girl and the, the normal Burn. Um, the not optimized versions, obviously, these were just for fun, but they still packed a heck of a punch. So uh, it makes a lot of sense that people were saying, hey, that's the deck to beat. Uh, and as you went into this, uh, you also saw some Gruz uh, Busta Feed Sings at about seven decks, Feed Sing Mujdart at five, and then Mylist Feed Sing and Feed Sing Almerius had uh, six copies each. Uh, everything else was either uh, below that in terms of numbers. Uh, obviously, we had a Wolfgang player on stream. Shout outs uh, to that player, Sun, Sunny D, Sundial of the Discord. Links down in the description. Uh, was one of those Wolfgang players that we saw actually do pretty well. Um, so yeah, I mean, I love Wolfgang. I'm glad that this ruler actually uh, did, uh, had some of, some of a turnout this, week, this past weekend. And then everything else was uh, Machina, Gil Lapis, uh, Melgus. These are all, you know, here and there kind of decks. Uh, they weren't uh, doing a whole heck of a lot against the main table uh, rulers of choice. So, without further ado, all of this being said, let us finally get into Derek's list, which, you know, you might have just completely ignored the ruler breakdown and gone right to the list. I wouldn't blame you. This is such a cool list. I did not even know this deck existed. Uh, probably like some other players who are not in like the the, the pro sphere. Uh, but this is clearly uh, a very controlling set of rulers, but they're playing the Ouroboros. And unfortunately I can't tell you uh, which card that is. <laughs> like for whatever reason on OBS, my mouse doesn't show up. Uh, I mean, you can you can tell me whatever you want down in the comments, obviously. But Ouroboros is that big old swoopy loopy looking thing right next to the, uh, the Lycian. Uh, which is next to the Genesis. So on the right side of the screen there, that's what you're gonna be looking at. Um, 
between Lycan and Ouroboros, uh, this list has a really, really good way of getting around Almerius' life gain. Because when the Ouroboros hits the field, your opponent's life, or your, your own life, you know, hey, if you're at 400, I'll reset my own life to 2,000, thank you very much, but the reset happens. Um, and that's what's so powerful about the Ouroboros. You basically take the advantage that Almerius gives completely away from the player. Although there is some drain elements in that other opposing deck, uh, the Ouroboros is still a really powerful turn one push. Um, and so we saw uh, some Almerius, I think, I think it was Mylas Feasting doing something very similar with uh, Ouroboros playing Caduceus and Resistance as well to bring out that Ouroboros, but this is the deck that got to the top. What I think is really interesting about this deck as well is just the ability for it to draw through and find its cards. Uh, Lycian, Mirage, for C, all of these cards are existing so that uh, all of your stuff is, just gets cheaper and you can just cast for C for free. And you just draw a whole bunch of cards, find your combo pieces, slam the Ouroboros, and then go from there. Uh, Morgiana is also a really good tool for that if you're able to play her early. All of a sudden your four C's are letting you look at six cards as opposed to simply two. Um, and she also combos really well with the Bewildering Charm, which allows you to draw a card. Um, uh, the Burn Spell for Mylas Mujdart, you just have to rest Mujdart and then you can burn for seven and draw a card. Um, this is a good way of closing out games. Uh, all of a sudden all you need to do is 13 damage if you slam the Boris onto the field. And of course, I like Silmeria in this list because it just says, uh, Law of Silence, you don't get to play spells, I'm going to attack you for the game. And I love that. You're going to notice that Almerius is in the sideboard, but also is this little card called Parry. <laughs> so Parry is an important card all of a sudden. This is probably one of those cards that you just said, yeah, I'm going to put this in my bulk box, like I need four copies to complete my playset, but is this card ever going to be relevant? And you know, uh, yeah, it actually is surprisingly relevant right now. Uh, Perry basically says, pay, pay a white, uh, prevent the damage, and I believe it cantrips. I can't tell off of this, uh, off of this image, but I, it might cantrip. If it doesn't cantrip, it's still a really powerful card. Um, Derek is also playing a couple, uh, copies of Nidog in, in this list. In the sideboard, Nidog is an amazing card. I love it. He's my favorite 12 apostles, or 12 uh, protective deities. Sorry, they're not corrupted yet. And then he's interestingly playing a Hades. That's so fascinating. And I hope uh, he says more down in the comments uh, if you're able to interact with him down there. Uh, shout outs to you, buddy. Uh, glad you made it into first place. Next, we're going to be taking a look at David Smith, who got second place with his Feasting Almerius. Uh, this is a really consistent... Honestly, I would pick this deck up and, and play this. It's also the only instance of Neverend that we've seen in a GP uh, of this caliber. Um, Neverend, and I'm going to look this up for myself, just because there's a lot of text and there's just a lot of uh, just crazy stuff going on with this card. Uh, I'm just going to open up the database here. Oh my gosh, we're doing this in real time. The tournament report is never gonna be the same. So Neverend says, it has natural flying, you draw a card and it gets plus 14, plus 14, and fairy tales you gain, uh, fairy tales you control gain bear, uh, eternal, excuse me, plus 14, plus 14, and fairy tales you control gain eternal, as long as there are 10 or more fairy tales in the field under your control or in your graveyard. So this is a potentially one drop, draw a card. Um, it's a flying 15-15 with eternal. And so is all your other stuff for the most part. Rest or recover J ruler you control, cards you control and cards you own in non-field zones gain fairy tale until end of the turn. So this is a really splashable, very powerful way of gaining eternal on your opponent's turn. But also, this is a really strong card in general, and it doesn't have to be in a fairy tale deck. And so, I'm a little surprised that we haven't seen this um, up until now. Um, this card's really, really powerful. Um, and honestly, it's probably one of the better blue cards I've seen in quite a long time. With that being said, it's a, it's a 
one drop 15-15 in late game, and uh, you're just going to dump all your stuff into the graveyard for this. So, David Smith, uh, shout-outs to you for playing one of the coolest cards we got out of the new set. But, of course, he's also playing the Pierre package, the Frisia package, a Welser package, Awakening of Feasting to fetch all of these things from the deck, Exorcist Mage to, uh, to interact with your opponent's board state a little bit, and then probably the best card outside of, um, oh goodness, what was Derek running? <laughs> outside of Ouroboros this past weekend, right? Ouroboros, Lycan. Probably the other best card that we have to mention is um, Magic Stone Research Institute. The ability for Sigurd to, uh, who has been dumped by Araya, by the way, to simply grab this off of his enter, and then all of a sudden, uh, your stuff is just huge and hard to get around. Um, this card put in so much work, and this is why we can't look past, like, passive buffs um, in games like this. This card is absolutely insane. It gets you a card uh, from your stone deck. That stone comes in recovered, so you get to just do other stuff with it if you want to. Um, this, this card is so phenomenal and so fun, and we've never seen an addition really do this much work, at least in my opinion, not recently. Um, I remember things of like, like Robo Fire Rat doing so much work as an addition, um, so this is bringing back some nostalgia for me. Of course, because he's playing a couple of Sigurds, he's actually playing three, which is a little different than um, so a lot of folks. Uh, usually you're only seeing around max two, but this uh, um, this list went all the way up to three. He can uh, grab Cage of Mother Goose in order to do some um, removal in that way. And he's only playing one Golem. And maybe that's because in testing he just found that he just never really had a huge issue. Uh, I don't I don't know. I'm just like one golem. That's that's really interesting. Just one. Um but he just needed one golem, so if, if he got second place, I'm not gonna argue too much, right? But I would imagine you would wanna play more. Um But like I said, if he got second place, I'm not gonna argue too much, but this is a pretty solid list. I like how consistent it is. I like that it's a lot of four ofs, a lot of three ofs. Um, and then you have some tech choices like Final Stance, which can be dumped off the Rhea and brought back with the Almerius to get yourself a second turn. We didn't, you know, I know that we talked about this on the podcast a little bit, but the Final Stance, you know, throwing it into the grave to bring it back, um, that in and of itself seemed a little meme -y, but it seems like it's not. So don't overlook, don't overlook any combo. Uh, try it for yourself and just figure out if it's good or not from there. Um, that's all I gotta say. That's my lesson for the day. So now we're moving on to Sam Calmer's list, who got third place. He's playing an Almerius Grizz Ballesta list. This is another really popular combination. There's a lot of stuff going on in this list. Um, what we have is the Final Stance, the Magic Re uh, Research Institute for the Magic Stones, um, Awakening of Guru Valesta. This deck has a lot of one ofs, but it's also trying to do a lot of other things. You're going to notice in this list that the Spirit of Knowledge is in the list, and that Wispy Boy, one of my favorite card arts of all time in this game, outside of like Kiki and a couple of other cards I don't even remember right now because those two are just all encompassing. Spirit of Knowledge just allows you to grab your golem. And Honestly, for a one-drop blue that can just grab your golem and then just play the golem, um, that's pretty good in a list where you have um, all these different color magic stones. So um, that's not even a huge hurdle for this deck whatsoever. What I'm also noticing is there's not a lot of Welsers in this list, which I found I didn't even notice until now, honestly. Um, there's only one defense stance. <laughs> But there's no there's no cancels outside of that, and so I'm interested in what Sam's thoughts were of Welser because uh, I feel kind of split on the card myself. We definitely saw a lot of Welser in the top two, um, but if you don't have Welsers right now, it's definitely possible to get into the top three. So just keep that in mind. Uh, sometimes uh, cards that are you need them in your deck in order to win, uh, that's not necessarily true in this game. So if you're coming in here from other games, then that might have been your experience. 
Uh, it's not necessarily the experience of uh, Sam here. So um, take a look at this list. Uh, I think it's really cool. It's got all those extra mages, uh, a couple of peers, Suya making an appearance as well. So uh, congratulations to Sam for getting top three. And then we have uh, Georgios Kuzos. Kuzos. I'm definitely saying her name wrong, pal. Uh, sorry about that. Um, but this is the, I believe we actually had this on stream. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. If we did, uh, he's playing Mujdar because he doesn't have Feasting yet. So, <laughs> um, but that being said, you can not have Feasting and have a Mujdar and still do good enough to get to the top four if you have uh, the skill. Also playing for Suya. Um, also playing the Wispy Boys to get your golems. Magic Research Institute. Playing a couple of Welser, not a whole suite. Um, and this is just your basic control package. Um, as as we go forward, I mean, I'm I'm gonna I'm wondering if people are gonna see Feedsing drop off. We did get the new um, Lumia spoiled, which seems to really be curving out uh, burn a little early, but we'll have to see. Um, this deck, again, really solid, uh, just the ability to do multiple different things, very interesting control list. Then we're going on to Brandon Brema, friend of the channel, obviously. This is uh, Jeremy's cards. <laughs> um, and Brandon Brema took the initiative to actually write out Stone of the Six Ages four individual times in his deck list. I'll have you, I'll have you know. This list is really interesting. It's playing things like Awakening of the Winged Lord, Fiola, um, there's some other cards in here that are a little bit different. He's playing three Altasing instead of, um, you know, a full package of Welsers. Uh, he really wants the cancel package. He really wants to control the board. And he's also playing two defense stance. So a lot of canceling going on in this, um, a lot of utility in this deck list. Fiola making an appearance. I personally really love Fiola. I'm glad it was actually used in this list. Uh, Awakening of the Winged Lord. I'm wondering how this would, would turn out with things like, and maybe he's digging for his Magic Stone Research Institute or his defense stances. Um, but I see that card clashing a little bit, maybe with your Welsers or your Fiolas. Um, just because you do want to have those in hand and you don't want to incidentally discover those as you're looking at the top. That's my only thought. I'm really interested in why Mujdar is in the sideboard package and if that was going to come in against a non-burn list or if he was going to replace Feet Sing with it for, um, for some particular reason. I'd like to know his thought process on that as well. Next, we're looking at another friend of the channel, Dan Rowland. Uh, he was also playing Facing Almerius. Uh, playing a lot of four ofs once again. Uh, I guess I, I tend to like lists that are a little bit more consistent, so decks like this make a lot of sense to me. He's playing four flute, which is also not something we saw a ton of in the GDP. Uh, but he's playing two duet of light uh, of two. Sorry, two duet of darkness, which is a good board wipe spell if you have all of these different stones available to you, which. You know, you definitely have those available uh, if you're playing something like Institute. He's playing two final stance. Typically, we're at, at this point, we're seeing a lot of players playing one. Uh, Dan opted to run two in case he drew it. Um, that's typically how that goes. Um, but then just having a lot of removal options, a lot of aggression options in uh, Pierre and uh, Mikagi Rea. And then discard packages and Dark Alice's smile and the other part of uh, Suya's effect. And so you get these these little weenies that get really big, um, which definitely sounds like like Dan's typical strategy. A lot of really cheap stuff that gets bigger is uh, something that I've seen from him before. So congratulations, Dan, for getting uh, the top eight spot. And then we're looking at uh, Daniel Negretti, and I really hope I'm saying that name right. Typical meme of this channel is I can't say names right. Uh, very similar list as well. Uh, playing four duet uh, instead of only two. A couple of Guinevere for draw power is something we've seen up to this point. And then Assault from the Demonic World. This or Moan of the Dead. Typically people are going more toward Assault from the Demonic World. 
even if I don't particularly like this card because I don't think revenge is good enough as a mechanic, but here we are. <laughs> uh, Assault from the Demonic World is uh, putting in a lot of work here, and I think especially in lists like this where you can um, sack things on your own board with Guinevere um, is a really good way for you to activate the revenge and just straight up kill things or you block with a Pierre or a Morning Angel you don't need anymore and all of a sudden it's, it's live. Um, so this is pretty standard on Mary's Cruz Valesta list. Uh, Joe Ramirez doing something very similar. Hey, we have an instance of uh, the new Lilius Petal card, which is pretty cool. Uh, he also seems to be really liking the Awakening of Gruz Ballesta as well, um, opting to run four copies of that, um, which, you know, if you can make your stones animate and start beating your opponent to death, I think that's a good way of winning the game. Uh, and it complements uh, Lily's Petal as well. And I believe the Wispy Boy will actually grab him. Let me double check so I don't look like an idiot. <laughs> Um, let's see. The name is actually not Wispy Boy. It's Spirit of Knowledge, by the way. Da, 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 da. Please bear with me. So the Spirit of Knowledge, uh, yeah, costs four or more. Um, I always get him confused with, uh, Shion's effect, which is five or lower, right? So he's four or more, so you can grab the latest petal off of his effect, which is, you know, a nice way of, like, grabbing multiple board wipes. If Golem is really going to put a lot more pressure on than Lilius petal, that might be the way to go. Um, if there's something that's somehow bigger than Golem <laughs> and you need Lilius petal, um, that's, that's a way of getting around some of that as well. Um, but I, I like this list as well. This is a good list to just pick up and have fun with. So if you have this, these cards, uh, go for it. Congratulations to Joe for getting top eight. And we're back to Derek. So with all that being said, uh, the Games and Geek uh, OGP, as I'm calling it in this particular caption, was super fun to watch. I was there for most of the early uh, for rounds one through, I believe, five, uh, maybe eight maybe round six as well, because I think round six for us on stream went really quick, but super fun event. I hope you enjoyed it if you were taking part. I hope you got some sick promos. Uh, question of the day, uh, what ruler do you want to see fall off besides my list? Because I know that everyone hates burn. Everyone hates it. I happen to love burn. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm part of the problem. I know it. But uh, besides my list, what ruler do you want to see sort of begin to fall out of favor? If I had to say there was any ruler that I really wanted to see taper off besides my list, it would probably be uh, Gris Ballesta. And the only reason is because uh, the stone fixing and the uh, Research Institute in and of itself, like that package. Actually, honestly, I don't even want to see a ruler fall off. I just want to see a Stone Institute maybe get a little bit of a... Uh, people don't want to play that nearly as much. Uh, mostly because it, it does get, get kind of ridiculous after some point where you just like get two on the board and then all of a sudden your opponent just can't answer your field. Uh, but that's my only real thing. And honestly, it's not even the worst. Um, I would probably, if I really had to talk about a ruler, maybe Feed Sing, um, bring a little bit of variance back into the game, but again, it, this is the best set of Force of Will history as far as I'm concerned, so, uh, outside of my list, I don't really know. <laughs> but you let me know down in the comment section down below, what ruler do you want to see taper off, and uh, how do you think the meta is going to shape with this new mini set that we're getting, and by the way, we're getting spoilers for set three of this cluster right now so who knows we might even see some more stuff that'll make you reconsider some of these rulers and going into the future that being said guys this has been paul thanks for coming to coming into the tournament report and chilling out with me and bearing with me as i look up cards randomly i'll catch you next time and as always class is dismissed Thank you.